Hi, congratulations on your new RV. We're really excited for you. Please make sure before you're signing that you bring the following items with you. If you are a cash buyer, please make sure that you bring a cashier's check, no personal checks at time of signing, or you may bring actual cash. If you're a finance customer, please make sure that you bring proof of insurance listing your specific lien holder. If you need that information, please call us ahead of time. Also, make sure that you bring all valid driver's license of all persons that will be listed on the title. If you have a trade that you're trading in with us, please make sure that you bring your 10 day payoff as well as your title and all persons who will be listed on the title of that trade. Um, arrive 30 minutes early before your appointment time so we can properly inspect your unit and also make sure that you have the fridge on and running prior to arrival. If you have any questions, please feel free to give us a call at 810-686-0710. Thanks so much. Have a great day. Hello, this is Mike with Tradewinds RV Center here to congratulate you on the purchase of your Prowler 271BR. I'm here to walk you around the unit, show you how to use a few things, get the best out of your camping experience. Let's start by talking about arriving at the campsite. Most important thing you need to take into consideration is your slide. Got a pretty deep slide here. Get a good eye for it. Make sure you know how deep it is so this can come in and out unimpeded. Preferably nothing hanging over top of it. Then, of course, your water and power. Your power is going to be on your off camp side, all the way to the rear, on your driver's side of your tow vehicle. And your water connection, same place, just above it. So park accordingly so that you can utilize the facilities at the campsite. If you've arrived and unhooked your hitch, first thing you do is level your unit. Now I do recommend getting a stick on level. Have your slide closed, measure the middle of that, put a stick on level there and have someone watch that while you level your unit. On the front here. Do you have a docking light should you arrive at night? Simply raise or lower the unit. Now should you lose power, you do have a manual override here and a hand crank that can raise and lower this should you not have power. Speaking of power, check your battery post. Make sure your terminals have a wiggle loose over going down the road. But you got unit level. Next thing you can do is stabilize it. Uh, four corners, you have these power stabilizing jacks. Simply hit extend and they'll run down. Now before I run these all the way down, I highly recommend jack pads. Jack pads that can protect the feet of your stabilizing jacks from dirt, debris, and hot black top in the summer. Put four pack of those down. Extend these down just until they're taut. Now note, one side may come down before the other. It happens a lot. Put your jack pads down, go ahead and run these down, again just until they're taut. Once you start to feel it lift the unit at all, you know that you're down far enough, you don't want to go any further. Remember these are stabilizing jacks, uh, not leveling jacks. So make sure your unit's level, then run these down in the front and back, make sure your unit is stable. Once it's level and stable, we go ahead and hook up our power and water. Again, all the way over here on your off camp side toward the rear. It's gonna be your 30 amp service. At the end of this 30 amp, should you need it, to plug in at home in your convenience pack is a 30 to 110 adapter. Get your power hooked up, let's hook up our water. Here is our city water connection. Open this up. First and foremost, your water pressure regulator. Oh, this water pressure regulator is going to reduce the water pressure to 40 to 50 PSI, protecting the lines in your unit. Always use this when putting water into your city water tank or your black tank flush. Hook this up, hook up your hose, but don't turn your hose on yet. Let's go find your hot water heater. So over here on your campsite is your hot water heater. All we're doing at this point is making sure we've returned your drain plug. You may have left it out last time you were camping. Draining your hot water heater. Plumber's tape is recommended. Don't use plumber's putty, it'll stick in them grooves. Get that, in, get that in there nice and tight. Then you can go ahead and turn on your hose. Go inside your unit and turn on your hot water valve. It's not gonna be hot yet, but once water starts coming out of there, you know your hot water heater is full. You can shut that off and turn on your hot water heater from indoors. There is an on off switch. It's set to off on this electric element. The only time you ever wanna 
turn this on here as well as indoors if you're hooked up to 110. Reset buttons. Hot water heater doesn't seem to be working. Come out here and if these are bubbled up, press that back in. That resets your hot water heater. Now say we're gonna go camping and we're not gonna use the city water, we're gonna use potable water. Just the right of your hot water heater is your fresh water connection. Simply fill this up with a hose, no water pressure regulator needed. Two ways to tell when it's open or when it's full. There's an overflow valve here. And on the inside you can check your fresh water tank and that'll show when that's full as well. Just remember, turn on your water pump when using the potable water. Don't turn on your water pump when hooked up to city water, it's already pressurized. All right, that about covers everything hooked up to camp. Let's go ahead and walk around the rest of the unit. Do you have a 110 out here? A couple outdoor speakers in your awning. We'll run that out here shortly. There's a hood vent for your microwave. Again, your hot water heater. This is your furnace heat release. Steer clear of that. If you're running your furnace, it'll get rather warm. A couple of low point drains. One here if you're hooked up to city. And there's your potable water one. Come around the back of the unit, here's your rear stabilizing jack. Your spare tire, your bunk entry doorway, and they're cleaning your unit as we speak. Up top here is your Furion backup camera. Uh, this is all prepped for that. It's a device you can purchase and set on the dash of your tow vehicle. Give you a backup camera for the unit. Over here on our off camp side, two different hookups. First, this is where you hook up the cable at the campsite. Black tank flush, we'll talk about that when leaving the campsite. City water connect, an outdoor shower. And down here is your dumps. Your power, your big slide. Coming over here, your pass through storage. All these hold up with a magnet. Coming to the front of the unit, propane tanks with a regulator. Simply point this toward the tank you wish to be using. Lefty Lucy to open. Again, your battery terminals. Is this prep for a solar charge? Plug a solar panel in here and it'll trickle charge your batteries. Again, your power tongue jack. There's a cover for your propane tanks. And again, your pass through storage with your hand crank. That about covers everything on the outside. Let's go on the inside. All right, now coming up inside the unit, first thing I want you to take note of is where your fire extinguisher is. Make sure that you and everyone that's camping with you knows that the fire extinguisher is located at the edge of the doorway. Coming inside here is your interior and exterior lights, your slide control, and your awning extend and retract. I'm gonna run that out real quick, show you how far to run that awning out. There's a QR code here that Heartland has. It gives you an owner's manual. So you only want to run this on and out until you see your flap fall down to 90 degrees and you can see that bar. As far as you want to run it out, it will continue to run. So pay attention as you're running it out. I'll bring it back in. It's kind of windy and they got the door open. Let me close your door so you can hear me. All right, so coming around inside your unit here. Self-explanatory microwave. Do have a lot of individual lighting. Stove has a fan and light. This glass top makes an excellent backsplash. Simply turn this to light. Hit your spark when your gas is on at a light. Coming over to your Nordic Hold fridge. Hold your power button on for a couple seconds here. It turns on. Now whatever is white on here is what you're controlling. So right here is the freezer. Switch it over here to the fridge. See how the bottom is white. This is a night mode. It tells the fridge, hey, I'm not going to be opening and closing you as much. Could you please reduce the power intake? And it does so. On the wall here is your thermostat. We will turn that on and go straight to the air. There's your air on. Switch your mode to furnace. 
You'll notice your air should shut off kind of quickly. It does. Then your furnace kicks on. Now shut that off. You'll notice the furnace takes a few minutes to shut off. Coming down at the bottom, here's your 12 volt carbon oxide detector. The reason I mention this 12 volt, it's always running off your battery. So if you're gonna be gone for the day, nothing hooked up charging your batteries, be sure to use your battery disconnect to keep this from running your batteries down. Right over here in the hallway is your access panel to your breaker box and fuses. Looks like you got mostly 15s in there. I'd recommend having a handful of those with you when you go camping. Your table, you simply lift the top up. Legs will come out. Set your top on these lips here. Move your back cushions to set on top for a bed. This piece here just jackknifes into a bed. Lift the front and lay it down. All prepped for a TV if you do hook a TV up. There's a little button right here. Before you run your digital channel scan, push that in. It's a digital channel scan enhancer. Allows you to pick up more channels. Your sound system. Dual zone. Oh, they've got it on. There, switch it to FM. So, turn your music off here. Now it's on outside. So it's scan, not picking up very many channels indoors here. Here we go. There's your music indoors, outdoors, or both. Touch it for a mute, hold it in to shut it off. Auxiliary, USB, nice system. Uh, in your ceiling, right above your slide, is your smoke alarm and your AC with quick dump. Come back into your main bedroom here. Not much to talk about back here. Here's your main light. This is prepped for a television back here as well. No need for digital scan. The one up front takes care of all that. Your 110 cable and that's a wine guard satellite. Just subscribe to that. Going to the back here. In the bathroom, just a couple things to mention. Lighting and a fan. Here's where you check your levels. There's your brand new battery. Here's your fresh tank. That's why I said you can hold the button down until when your fresh tank is full when doing potable water. Black and two gray tanks. Here's where you turn on your water pump if you're using potable water. Water heater if you're using gas. Water heater if you're using electric. And here's your 110 with GFCI reset. A little plumbing behind the toilet. And under the sink behind this access panel. To maintain, just keep an eye on it as you would at home. That about covers everything on the inside. Let's act like we're leaving the campsite. So first and foremost, these cabinet doors. These are the only thing that's gonna hinder this slide from coming in. Make sure they're all in nice and tight. And I like to come, we'll close that door as well. I like to come up here and close off the interior lights right here. Then I can see all the individual lights I need to go through and shut off. I failed to mention your whole bunk room. So as you see how these strap up for travel, bring your legs down on both ends, undo these and your bunks will lay down. Separate lighting back here. There's your ladder to get on the top bunk. And this is also prepped for a TV back here. Cable 110, set of television on here. All right, so I'm going through the unit. I shut off all of our doors. All of the individual lighting. Now we can go ahead and bring our slide in. Turn our lights back on. Hit slide in. You notice the importance of having that door closed. The other end, nothing there, but just make sure you don't leave anything to hinder these, the slide from coming in. Of course, make sure your bunk room door is closed. And this runs in rather quickly. I did want you to hear that noise. Don't worry, it's nothing grinding. That's the slide keeping itself from sliding in too fast. Show off our interior lights, head out of the unit. So as you exit the unit. So now leaving, 
You want to make sure this exterior door is opened all the way so this doesn't catch on it. So you lift your door. These feet are adjustable by the cotter pins. Get that set in there. Turn this handle right or left, either one. And that'll allow you to lock your door in. Lock and deadbolt your exterior door. Lift and turn the handle. Door's all secure. Come up underneath here. If you're using potable water, you'll drain that drain. If you hooked up to city water, you can open up both of those. Come to your hot water heater. Pull up on this pressure release valve. That's gonna go ahead and let all the air out, or all the water out of the line here. When it's done, make sure you push this back down or your door will not close. And then you can pull your drain. Remember you're dealing with hot water, so be careful. Be sure to close your hot water heater door. A lot of people forget. Go ahead and bring up our stabilizing jacks. We'll unhook our cable, unhook our water. Actually, it's best to unhook your water before uh, dumping those low point drains. Pick up our hitch and head on up to the dump station. That's the dump station. Take the sewage hose, 10 foot long, comes to your convenience pack. Hook it up here, put the other end in the dump. First thing you're gonna do is pull our black tank. That's gonna be the handle on the right. After it sounds like that's no longer draining, leave that black handle open. Use your water pressure regulator again and come to this black tank flush. At this point, hook this up and hook up the hose at the dump station. Turn that on and let that run for a good five minutes. That's gonna wash all that nastiness out of your black tank. Unhook that hose, come down here and close your black tank. Then you're gonna pull your gray tank. Gray tank's gonna be cleaner water as your sinks and your showers. Then we're gonna come here in front of your tires. Hook up the sewage hose again and pull this second gray tank. Again, that's going to be your cleaner wires, your sinks, and your showers. That'll clean your sewage hose out for you. Come right back here to your bumper. Open that up and conveniently store your sewage hose in there. Again, we thank you so much for your purchase. We hope you guys enjoy this power for many years to come. Happy camping. <laughs>